Homeland Security. That is every household making less than 80000 a year. There are no vacancies. Many people are living in stress, fear, and uncertainty. The situation has been building for years, documented by the LTC's own reports going back at least as far as 2003. Yet few of the recommendations of those reports have been acted upon. There is nothing ecological about preserve and protect if the results of those decisions are literally boatloads of people traveling in cars from Vancouver Island. There is no sustenance of island character or healthy community if working people fulfilling essential services are sleeping in cars shacks with no water, and families that are born here, seniors living here 40 years, are forced to leave the only place they call home. This situation demands strong leadership and emergency action beyond the status quo, beyond business as usual. The many people here to express their concerns on this issue are but a fraction of those affected and concerned. My family and I were evicted from the home we were living in as new owners came and bought the land in the cabin, and that's all fine. Uh, what they ne neglected to tell us was their intent was to turn it into an Airbnb. There was no rentals on the market, so my family and I, under a great deal of stress, my wife was pregnant, and uh, so we bought a yurt, and uh, friends of ours invited us to their land. A couple weeks ago, somebody called a complaint and came onto the land. And the bylaw officer came and said there's zoning issues with the yurt and we are living illegally. We are now in limbo once again in terms of our housing situation. Um, I have two children, two young children, and they are in danger right now. They are threatened and it's a lot of stress on my family once again. So there's two perspectives I've been faced with, the Airbnb situation and now with bylaw situation. So. We would like to see some bylaws changed to support landowners so they can have people on their land. And we'd like to see the reduction in, in Airbnbs. Thank you. We've been here since 2010 and we had a house for three years that we, which we rented. Uh, we were recently chucked out because they were selling the house. Uh, I've managed to find something temporary, but last summer we opened Basil's Pizza uh, downtown. We took a lot, which was essentially a garbage dump. We cleaned it up, we put a lot of time, effort, uh, and, and some obviously some money into that lot to clean it. We pulled six rain soaked sofas out of there, washing machines, God knows what. Um, and so here we are in a situation, this ludicrous situation, where I'm a business owner in the community and I cannot find anywhere permanent to live. So that uh, causes an issue, obviously. Uh, I'm in a crisis mode like, along with a lot of other people here. Uh, I would say uh, there are two major issues here. There's the short-term family rentals and there's the fact that there are 20 to 30 percent of island homes sitting empty with nothing happening at all. Uh, these both need to be addressed and uh, I would say, I don't know, the 20 files you had open uh, is a drop in the bucket as far as I'm concerned. If you look at Airbnb, there are hundreds of, of um, listings. So that needs to be dealt with. I, I love Salt Spring. It's the most incredible place in the world. It's taught me how to be very uh, adaptable. Uh, as I have lived in the worst conditions that I've ever lived in my life. I lived in Calgary for 37 years. I was a homeowner. I was married. I did all that. It didn't work for me. Um, so now I'm here in paradise and the uh, happiest I've ever been. I love growing food. I ride my bike. I, I take up very little space. And uh, I'm here to help. I, I want everybody to work together. Uh, are we a business or are we a community? Uh, my problem with the word community is the prefix C-O-M-M. -M. It's, it's for money. Uh, I like the prefix C-A-L-M, calm, unity. Conscious, aware, loving, and mindful. We all are in this together. I've seen a lot of properties around this island that are dumps. They've got so much crap on them. And it's because there's no people there to help. They need the young people there to help move this stuff around. Uh, everybody here needs a hand. They really do, and they want it. And we're all scared of each other. We can't trust each other because we're going to steal from each other. But who cares? If I face a housing crisis, I will not get a house because I have kids. Every single one of the houses, like, I, I get five emails a week from people because they think I'm connected because I do nice things. And I don't, I'm not connected enough anymore. 
There is no housing for kids. We have a crisis. We, we don't have a housing crisis. We have a benevolence crisis. Kindness is the problem. And we need to create a campaign for children. We need to figure out how to get people to understand that this is part of our role as adults, is to make sure that children get houses. We need to do a lot of things as adults. I guess that's like what I think adulthood is all about, is being responsible for the problems that come before you. It's not okay to just say that there's other people responsible and we're hoping that this changes because of this government, this government. We actually have to make action. And we can do that through the private sector. It's, it was done for seniors. We have a place like Brinkworthy. I don't understand why we haven't done that for, for children yet. They are not in this room. I think that's potentially the biggest reason. There were five here. They had to leave, obviously. But we need to represent for them. The kids aren't here. They can't vote. They don't have money. We have to do better for them. And I think you can. So I'd like to stop hearing people say that they can't do a responsible thing. Do one. What I heard today was, and I agree with it, that there's a housing crisis on this island, and we need a new paradigm if we are going to resolve that housing crisis. However, looking to rezone or land use zoning as a solution to the problems this island is facing uh, allots to the local trust committee way more powers than we have. Uh, much of our rules and regulations and our powers are subservient to those of provincial authorities. So even if we were to rezone the whole island, increasing density, some of those other legislative tools would still be obstacles to resolving this particular issue. But I agree there is a need to review the OCP, official community plan, notice the middle word, community, the OCP was devised by this community and, and it's implemented and exercised by the local trust committee um, in the interest of the community as a whole. Now if that OCP needs to be revised, it will be done in consultation with the whole community. And it could well be as a consequence of that, we do revise standards and we do revise densities on the island. What will happen if and when, having revised those densities, we reach build-out? And then people start constructing illegal buildings despite the fact that we've revisited those issues. Is the answer to have no enforcement, just allow it to happen? But if we set densities and we reach those density limits, but by concord with this community, we have to have enforcement at the end of it, otherwise we might as well throw away the rule book. It's illusory to believe that you're going to resolve a housing crisis by having a free-for-all in building standards. You're going to create a building crisis. By um, tacit approval, you're going to encourage so many substandard illegal dwellings on this island that at the end of the day, it's going to be either too expensive or too socially disruptive to do something about it. Now that's the situation we're faced with here. Um, and, and I think laws are in place to prevent that happening, to help maintain standards. You know what? So I'm all for working with this community to re-examine the OCP, to re-examine the standards, to look at alternatives within the framework of what is possible for this local trust committee but the message has to be no more illegal dwellings, no more substandard dwellings, no multiple dwellings on a lot where several houses are fed into one septic system to the extent that it can no longer cope and neighbours have sewage running onto their land because that's a situation we're facing. No more situations where fire tenders can't get onto properties with illegal dwellings uh, to fire, fight fires. No more situations where seismic regulations are not complied with. Because if we have a quake, some of those illegal houses are going to cause loss of life. These are the issues that we have to face with and we have to confront. So I'd like to work this with this community to re-examine the paradigm, see what's possible uh, within the, the legal framework and, and do it in a constructive manner. And it's been a very constructive um, 
meeting today. Thank you for your contribution. <laughs> appreciate the input and what everybody has had to say. It's certainly been heard, certainly heartfelt. Um, it's certainly very upsetting. Um, but George has spoken very well. Um, and uh, there is only so much we can do, but by golly, we're going to do what we can. Also, this is part of a, an overall official community plan review, which needs to be done. And that is not a one-day event. That's not a three-day event. That's a one-year event, probably going over a, a whole, many, many, many meetings because we've got to involve as many people on the island as possible, not just a, a few. Um, and indeed, this uh, crisis exists throughout the Islands Trust area as a microcosm, but in the macrocosm, people are homeless everywhere. It's a provincial issue. Hmm? It's a provincial issue. Yeah, well, global issue. Um, we have immigrants from around the world that are looking for a safe place to live. And uh, despite the fact there's no housing here, this is a safe place to live, and we can be grateful for that. It is a uh, trust-wide area, but we, sh we do need to reflect on the urgency of it here, as we've heard today. But um, we have been actively busy. Uh, affordable housing is on our strategic plan, that we are trying to address this um, uh, trust-wide. And in fact, we've done housing needs assessments in the Southern Gulf Islands. We've just been finishing up doing housing needs assessments in the Northern Gulf Islands. We're going to get a report in, I think, another week and a half or 10 days um, to, uh, to receive that report. And from those reports, we will be uh, putting our uh, thoughts behind how we might um, address what it is that we've found out in our communities. But you're not alone. And there is a, a commitment on the part of Trust Council, 26 trustees that represent all of the citizens in the uh, Islands Trust, to, um, to address this. And so we're certainly understanding, and I like the notion of let's be creative, let's be innovative, let's engage our youth. There was a fabulous lecture the other day at UBC about millennials, millennials and how they are going to embracing the future. And indeed, it's a difficult future for them. We've been very lucky, many of us that are gray-haired have been very lucky to have our time here.